Hello and welcome to the Tough Girl Podcast Extra. I'm your host, Sarah Williams. The Tough Girl Podcast Extra is when we go back and speak with previous guests that we've had on the Tough Girl Podcast or we catch up with members of the Tough Girl Tribe. Like the Tough Girl Podcast, Tough Girl Extra is sponsorship and ad-free and that's thanks to the monthly financial support of patrons. Find out more about supporting the Tough Girl Podcast, then please do go check out Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tough Girl Podcast. Well, Tribe, I'm absolutely delighted that we are back speaking with Zoe langley Watham, who we had on the podcast in November 2017. And Zoe shared more about her life, her love of walking, walking the Southwest Coastal Path, the Wales Coast Path, and Offers Dyke. So, Zoe, I'd love for you to introduce yourself, just for people who maybe haven't heard the first episode, to so just tell me a little bit more about you and your background. I started at Wathwalk in 2010 um, as a means of getting out there and walking and fundraising for a couple of local charities and the school that I was working in. And um, so in 2011, I walked the Southwest Coast Path. In 2012, I walked the Wales Coast Path. And I was the first woman to walk that after Ari Beresford Webb, who is now Ari Kane, had run it. And then 2013, Offers Dyke. 2014, Mend It Way. And bit by bit, you know, this, this love of walking has just crept its way into my life in a way that I never had thought possible you know it was just the fact that I was going on one long distance walk in 2011 to mark my 40th birthday and I thought that would be it and then it snowballed and uh, now my friends my family my community just associate me with with walking and challenges and um, they tend to be they they know it they're going to be big challenges so that's that's me in a nutshell it's I am the woman who walks <laughs> no I love it because you've got such a passion for for walking which is absolutely fantastic but tell us more about what you got up to since since we've last spoken so tell us what was happening in 2017 at the end of 2017 Right. Okay. Yes. Well, so 2016, I'll just quickly go back. 2016, I got married and Mike and I went off and did the Camino, uh, which was amazing. That was our honey walk. And then 2017, we decided that we needed another big challenge to do together. And one of my sort of bucket list walks, if you like, um, is actually the three walks is the triple crown in America. And I Obviously, no, I can't do that at the moment. So we we made up our own. So we decided to go off and do our Oop North Triple Crown. Sorry, everybody who's up north. I've, I know I've just absolutely murdered that. Um, but So it was the Pennine Way and Hadrian's Wall and Coast to Coast. And we'd worked out this amazing route, starting at Edale, heading off up to Scotland, up to the Border Hotel uh, at the end of the Pennine Way, and then dropping down to... Uh, Newcastle to Hadrian's Wall and then going over to Carlisle and then dropping down again and doing coast to coast and that was going to take us a month and we were very excited about that. We were actually just a couple of weeks behind uh, a friend of ours who was also walking the Pennine Way. Uh, that was just fluke. He had the the best weather ever. I was following him on Facebook. The photos of, and the sunshine were it was just gorgeous. The day we started Pennine Way, it started to rain. It was the first time in I don't know three months or something, and. Do you know, out of the 19 days that uh, it took us to do the Pennine Way, it rained for 16. <laughs> we, we discovered what uh, Pennine Bog is all about. And we really, we we know we pushed ourselves to a limit on that walk. And it wasn't our limit. We didn't actually push ourselves to our limit necessarily, but we, we pushed ourselves to a limit. How did you, I was just going to say like, because that could be really demoralising, you know. That- Oh, yes. Six sixteen days of of rain and British rain at that. I mean, that must have did that put a strain on sort of like the the motivation, the enjoyment, or even on like your relationship. As in, like, oh my god, this is horrendous. Not so much on our relationship because you know rain is rain, and yeah, we kind of we know how to get through that sort of stuff we have the kit we're, we're we have this joke sort of like oh we've got all the gear and no idea <laughs> and on this occasion we we were using pretty much just about every piece of kit that we had to to keep us dry and warm 
But, you know, even with all of that, uh, it did get to a point where we were, were feeling demoralized. And so we would treat ourselves every couple of days to a B&B because, it, because we were soaked. It even I don't think any kit that is up to being waterproofed would have withstood some of that weather that, that we got um, that summer. And, you know, I, I have photographs and, and oh, I should just say we, we the, the tent that we decided to carry. We, I have a Hilleberg, which is, you know, really the bee's knees. And Mike has another tent, which is the bee's knees. But they're both single tents, uh, single man tents. So they weren't really suitable for us to go off um, as a couple. So we we took a different type of tent and we removed the uh, the fly sheet. Uh, sorry, not the fly sheet. The inner tent, and just had the fly sheet. So we were basically using it like a tarp. So on this wet weather walk, <laughs> we've you know you've, we've got water streaming down the sides, and we're trying to keep everything you know in as far as we can, uh, so that we didn't get wet. And so it was, it was was what it was, and we enjoyed it for what it was. But we did treat ourselves to a B and B every two or three nights. So it was a little bit more expensive than we planned, but that was okay. We wanted it to be enjoyable and not necessarily uh, a challenge of of endurance. You know, there are some things that you know I will do where I think, no, I am actually challenging myself here. But when Mike and I walk together, it's 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 our together time. It's our holiday and. It might be something that's on the bucket list that we're ticking off, but it still needs to be enjoyable. What was the best bit from uh, from from those uh, nineteen days? Was it sorry, six sixteen days out on the we, no we nineteen did, days? It was nineteen days. Yeah, we did nineteen days. Do you know? Actually, this is this is going to sound bizarre. I mean, I loved the views. I loved the height. I loved just being in the vast, wide open space. Uh, I loved coming over one of the. Um, Dales, uh, one of the hills, I can't remember which one it was now, and it was complete white out. And then just at one point, this cloud, it just opened up a little keyhole of, it was like a little window of uh, cloud and you could see beyond. And all of a sudden, what you, you know, where you felt like you were enclosed in this tiny little room of cloud, suddenly you could see that there was a world out there. That was that was really amazing <laughs> um, because it just went on and on and on. And it's, it's one of the biggest areas up there. And I, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it is. And then another very amazing moment up there was um, when we I slept in a bothy um, on the last but one night and um, I I got out to go to the loo in the middle of the night and an an owl flew over my head I mean just a few feet over over my head it was it was a moon out so it's quite light and yeah I was I was in awe of that so there's I've taken away lots of wonderful memories even though it was a competition to see who was going to dunk into the bog first <laughs> oh my goodness what, what an incredible start to the up north triple crown yeah, yeah and then mike mike hurt his leg right at the end of that walk i mean it was pretty much on the last day he suddenly started hobbling and we knew that he wasn't going to be able to do hadrian's wall sensibly um, so it was either go home or carry on and find a way around it. So we carried on and found a way around it. So Mike used his bus pass <laughs> and followed followed along on the bus. And I walked Hadrian's Wall on my own. And and again, it, it had its a completely different feel to it, although it was all part of the same adventure with the Pennine Way, it became a completely different expedition or, or you know, adventure. Uh, just had a completely different feel to it were you able to meet up sort of at the end of every day so you had like planned yes. stops on the way yeah yes yeah we kept in touch uh, by phone and and we still we still wild camped it and I think we actually wild camped every single night on that one and that was quite nice for, from my point of view because I was actually able to to give Mike a couple of extra bits that I didn't necessarily need to carry and so he just popped them in a, in a bag that we'd bought from a charity shop and carried them along before I'd then see him again. But, you know, you, you go off into your own little world, your own 
mindset and, and thoughts and I, I get I do get lost in my thoughts a lot when I'm walking so what were you thinking about on that Hadrian's Wall walk was it, were there any topics that you wanted to delve into or because uh, like so so sometimes you know people um, I know like on the Appalachian Trail or actually Emma Timmis did it when she was in Australia she had these questions and thoughts um but yeah a little bit about the future a little bit so she just put these questions out there just at the very beginning just so that her mind could run over them not necessarily to try and get the answer there and then but just as an opportunity to have some deep thinking yeah yeah Yeah. I certainly future from about 2016 2017 onwards was definitely coming into my walking thoughts a lot um you know what what could I do with my future what can I do to change um my life for the better um how can I attain a work-life balance this this magical catchphrase that people talk about a lot that I didn't seem to have at that point you know what what could I do in my life that would help that and also things like you know where I I was I'd embarked on this new life with Mike you know we had only got married the year before and it's like so so where are we going to be you know we're we're when we walk together, we we talk very much about, you know, where we want to end up, what, what do we want from life, what's our next adventure going to be? <laughs> we talk a lot about that as well. Yeah, so I, I think it was very much about the future and, and how how I would maintain that work, not maintain, but attain that work-life balance. Yeah. So you started 2018 and you had a really big challenge for 2018. Do you want to share more about, about that? So yes, well, I, I I should just say that we we didn't conquer coast to coast uh, on the on the North Triple Crown because we decided then at that point it would be better for Mike and I to come back and do it together uh, when his leg was better. So it got to the point where over 26, 27, 2016, 2017, my parents' health had begun to um, fail. And they they weren't as strong as they had been, and they were needing family support much more. And in particular, on the Pennine Way and Hadrian's War, I had been thinking a lot about, you know, what the next challenge would be and how that would tie in with me being there for for mum and dad. And. <laughs> You know, Mike, Mike and I had, had spoken about this because, you know, we like to go off and do long distance walks. We like to go off for weeks, months at a time. And I knew that from 2017 onwards that I wouldn't be able to do that again. And that was something that I really grappled with inside. It, 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 was, it was something I was wrestling with because I knew it was what Mike and I needed to do for us because that's what we enjoy doing. But it wasn't what mum and dad needed. So from their point of view, you know, that once every six weeks visit, which is what I'd been doing forever (laughs) since leaving home, I'd go up and visit every half term as a teacher. I'd go up every half term, every holiday. um, And that works really well. And so I'd I'd started going up every fortnight. I was part time at work by now. and it was allowing me to go up every fortnight but that still wasn't enough I had to find a way of getting outside and getting that feeling that you get from a challenge knowing that you're working towards a goal knowing that you are this is going to sound really cheesy now I don't mean it to sound like this but really feeding your soul really feeding your spirit with everything that inspires you about being outside and for me it's about headspace being outside being able to think but it's also about what looking at what I'm surrounded by and listening to what I'm surrounded by I'm a creative so I I I really am inspired by you know skies and sunsets and trees and and everything that I see in the natural world that I find beautiful and I was starting to feel despondent because I knew I wasn't going to be getting that in 2018. So that was where we came up with the idea of 100 mappy days. And back in 2014, I had completed an online challenge of 100 happy days. Some people may have heard of that. And that's 100 consecutive days of finding something good that's happened in your day and acknowledging it. 
So it doesn't matter what else in, in your day has gone wrong. You're actually you're picking out that something that's happened that's that you can be positive about and be thankful for. And I love maps and I'm very thankful for maps. <laughs> And I have lots of maps at home and um, I should say we have lots of maps at home because Mike and I have, have pulled together our uh, collection of maps. And then we've got a, a couple of big maps on our, our wall as well. And so it seemed only right and proper that we should create a, a challenge that was um, geared around maps. So there was born 100 Mappy Days. And that's that was all about choosing um, and walking uh, a different walk each time using a map or a map app um, for 100 days. And that was not going to be 100 consecutive days because obviously unless I wasn't working, that wouldn't be possible. But it was going to be 100 days in a 365-day period. And that gave me that gave me the buzz that I needed. I was finding that I was following this challenge. I was keen to, keen to get out there and get walking each week. Um, 100 days in a 365-day period is actually is still a challenge. That's, that's two walks a week. And when you're working and supporting your parents and um, with teaching, I was bringing work home as well, so I'm doing stuff at home. Um, it was That was still a big challenge to do. But it was still a challenge that I felt was reachable it was just beyond reachable so is that, that that's what makes it the challenge is that it's just beyond reachable I love this idea because what you've done is you've combined you know the realities of of where you are with your parents with your other commitments with teaching but also by remembering what you love what brings you passion what feeds your soul and creating this this challenge which is actually very very personal um to both you and to mike you both love maps 100 mappy days you can see the connection with the 100 happy days what a great thing to do to start the year absolutely fantastic and like you said it, it that is a challenge like two weeks two sorry two walks a week it, it can be that can be difficult to do especially with everything else going on so yeah to, to tell us more about how it went how are you picking your routes did you have any rules did you have any distances you know what what, yeah. count, what sort of counted well is yes yeah, so I, that's the, the wonderful thing about challenges your own challenges you can make up your own yeah. rules um so i i had decided that they would have to be over a mile long so but because of the commitments with mum and dad in particular um or even with work you know if I only had time to go off and do two and a half miles three mile walk then then so be it that would that was still in my eye getting us out um and about into the open um and on a walk which was which was what the purpose of it was so as long as it was owned, uh, over a mile that was fine and and I think I've haven't done anything under two miles um but equally there was no cap on it you know so if I, we wanted to do a 10 15 20 mile walk then then great um if if a walk spans so if we were on a, um, a two or three day hike each of those three days would count as a mappy day um so you know, for example, if it was the Mendip Way, uh, which you can do in generally in about three or four days, that would that would have been four days. Um, and the only other rule really is that you can't walk the same walk twice for it to count, but your paths can cross. So if if I cross a trail or walk part of a path that I've walked before in order to make up a new route, then that's fine. So I always I always track it out on on my OS app either first or during. Sometimes I have to do it during, or I'll spread. You know, if I if I've got time, I'll spread out a couple of paper maps out and and map it out on there. But we generally know what we've got time to do that day, whether it's going to be an eight miler, if it's going to be a twelve miler, or if it's only going to be say like today we, we only had time to do three and a half miles today but it was it was wonderful a wonderful three and a half miles on parts of paths that we've never done before and it's still within our local vicinity and that's that's been really quite joyous because we we have lived down here or I have lived down here now for 29 years Mike was born in Dorset and knows lots of the areas but not this particular area and um, but we've been discovering paths and and uh, little footpaths 
sort of backstreet footpaths that we didn't even know existed. And and that's been really a, a, a delight to find those and to get to know them and connect ourselves with them. Oh. Yeah. So so how has it been going? So 2018, it was going fairly well up until March. And then I had um, a minor procedure, uh, a women's op um, in March. And that's then put things back a little bit. Um, and I was actually planning in April to to walk the Ridgeway as well, which would have added probably five days to my mappy days uh, with a girlfriend of mine from the local running club. Um, she walk, uh, she runs marathons. She did 14 marathons in the year and uh, is now an ultra runner. But at the time, I remember her saying to me, um, no, I said to her, I, you, this amazing what you're doing, Flipper. I, I couldn't do what you do. And she said, Zoe, but I couldn't do what you do either. And so I said, okay, well, let's let's see. Let's take you off on a, a long distance walk and we'll go and test that because I think you'll you'd absolutely love it and I think you'll find um, you know, a new passion. So we'd arranged to walk the uh, the Ridgeway in April too. But the the recovery from this procedure that I had was uh longer than I thought it was going to be. And we ended up having to postpone it until June we were going to do it in the June half term uh then April came and my dad had a fall and was taken into hospital and all of a sudden everything just was in complete turmoil because mum couldn't be left at home on her own at that point um dad was in hospital and we had um, discussions with doctors and social workers about dad coming home. But the only way he would be able to come home is if we did a little bit of sorting at the house. And um, I should say here, mum, mum has suffered with her mental health for many, many years. And I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying. Um, but as a result of that, there was um, a lot of clearing that needed to be done at the house. So Mum went off to respite for three weeks and we had an intense May um, sorting out bits and bobs in the house. So, you know, I was still managing to get little walks in here and there. And this is what I was talking about. You know, whatever you can manage, it's still important to get out there. And, And that point above any other point in the whole of the year, I would say, was the point where I needed to be out in the open and keeping my head clear and it, it was a, a well-being thing as much as a challenge um, so in the area that mum and dad live in North Somerset that that was where my new mappy days were, were taking place so June came and I obviously had the Ridgeway booked in with Flipper but it also coincided with mum coming out of respite and dad was still in the hospital at this point. And sadly, I had to postpone again. And as it was, Flipper's um, dad was also poorly. So the mappy days continued. July, we had a big walk. Mike and I had a big walk planned for the Beacons Way. And I say a big walk, again, it's not a big walk as in our sort of six or eight week walk plan, but Beacons Way was 100 miles. So it would have probably taken us about seven days again we had to cancel due to commitments with with mum and dad so we just threw ourselves into 100 mappy days and just you know did what we could there and continued with with our support with mum and dad and i i would not ever want that to have taken a back seat because to me you know the family side of it was a priority at the time and and that's that's most important and so we got to december and and actually, you know, there was that acceptance from my point of view that I thought, well, do you know what? I'm not going to make 100 mappy days this year. <laughs> it's, it's been one heck of a year. You know, just about everything that could have happened did. And I'm just going to have to accept that I will do as many as I can do. And so on New Year's Eve, uh, we were staying up in the Y Valley. We were staying with my brother 
in the Forest of Dean. And um, we walked in the Wye Valley and did our 50th Mappy Day on New Year's Eve. And we actually did that in memory of my dad. Sorry, that just came out of nowhere. Um, so we, we lost dad two weeks before Christmas um, in 2018. So that was that was a hard time for everybody and for mum included, because, you know, she'd she'd had this time on her own at home. Um, but obviously all the while hoping that that dad would be coming back um, and, you know, we'd cleared the house ready and uh, there was there was a bed waiting for him downstairs and, and all the equipment that he needed. Um, so it was it was a shock for us all. But, you know, that. It was also a positive. There was there were there was there were positives in in all of that. And at the funeral, um, which I, I gained a lot of solace from and a lot of um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but it's, it, it was it was a very powerful time at the funeral. And I spoke to a lot of people I'd never spoken to before, who said to me how much um, Dad had. Um, respected and been proud of the the walking that I had been doing over the years and so I had members of the parish council coming up to me saying oh you must be Zoe he's told us all about your Wales Coast Path Walk or he's told us all about your your Southwest Coast Path Walk so that that was that was wonderful to hear from somebody else um, that the things that dad had been saying about our, our walking so we embarked on 2019 with with a, a, a new verve, a, you know, a, a completely different perspective on life because now my priority was mum. But I still I still knew that I needed to look after myself. I still needed to find this work life balance, which which I don't know, it still was uh, evading me. And. I still wanted to carry on with my 100 mappy days, which now was was going to be extended over two years. Um, and that's what we're continuing with now. And actually, we've just we've just walked to number 73 today, which, as I said earlier, was great fun. I'm so sorry for the loss of your loss of your dad. I mean, and also just such a difficult time period to go through. And with, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And I think one of the key things you said is actually looking after yourself because it can be very easy to prioritize everybody around you and family, obviously, because that's what you want to do. Mm. But actually, sometimes you've got to put yourself first. You've got to make sure that you are looking after, after yourself. I was going to say, like, this is a thing with challenges when you create them yourself, like the 100 mappy days. Doing it in um, one year, yes, absolutely fantastic. But actually doing 50, 50 mappy days in a year, is it, that almost seems really fitting as well. Like to get to the halfway point, to be able to, to do that walk and, you know, the 50th walk and in memory of your dad who's so proud of you and all the walking that you've done. And then it's also something that can help you to continue to process in the, in the following year, to continue to have that purpose and that time for yourself while you're still balancing every, everything else because at the same time you do have – You've still got a job teaching, which I think has to be one of the hardest things you can you can possibly do. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, and actually, I I really appreciate you saying that, Sarah. Thank you, because that 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 whole you know everybody kept saying to me, make time for yourself, make time for yourself. But it, you know, at the time, it was very hard to do that because, um, especially for mum, you know, she she needed. Um, us to give her time that you know she had her own difficulties that she was trying to get through and she could only get through them with the support of her family so yeah I, there did come a point where I thought you know I, I do need to give myself some time and and I was able to do that through doing the walks and I think even if I had reached the, the hundred on New Year's Eve I think I probably still would have carried on because I'm so passionate about walking but it it was it was a, a means of keeping me going out when it was when it would have been very easy to have stepped back and said no right okay I've got I've got other commitments I've got to, and other responsibilities I've got here now uh, I haven't got time to go for a walk today actually it did keep that um, momentum going and I started finding that I, I was searching more as well 
for the things that were missing in my life then at that point. I think having lost dad, it, it then gave me time to reflect um, and think about what was missing. And it was like, well, what about the other things I used to do? What about cycling? Actually, it was, it was you, Sarah, <laughs> who got me back onto that again because of your um, Pacific Coast Highway and Baja Divide challenge and I kept thinking you know I've got a bike in the garage and I haven't been on it for six years <laughs> um and and I thought no I've got to get back on it and I hadn't been on it for all that time because I'd had an accident on it um six years ago and I thought no I've got to do this and so it started making me face that fear and 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 it felt really good to be back on the bike um, and so then I started really getting into, well, what else can I do that's going to help me to, to face things that I've been avoiding or, or face these fears, whether they're fears or whether they're just um, irrational things that are in my head? <laughs> you know, how do, how do we sum that up? So I, I started trying other things. And I, I went skiing in April with the school and absolutely terrified myself uh, but loved every minute of it but unfortunately on day four of eight days one of the students clipped the back of my skis and you know it was a completely innocent thing it could have been me doing it to somebody else it was it was so icy and it was so easy to slide uh, but yeah it took me down and my knee bent in a way that it's not supposed to bend. And I, I ended up being uh, having a peace rescue off of the mountain, which was very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the wrong way. I actually, I said to the guys, I said, I'm sorry, but if I am going to come off this mountain like this, you have to take a photo for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyway, I, I then had six weeks off of work, which was, was not what I planned at all. So I had I had faced some really scary pieces, some really scary things. I'd never skied in my life, apart from one dry slope skiing event at, at, at youth club when I was about 13 or 14. But other than that, I'd never skied on snow. I'd never even been into the mountains uh, other than the Cumbrian and the Welsh mountains, but I've never seen snow covered mountains. And I actually cried when I got to the French Alps. I cried because I, I had never seen it before and I just felt so overwhelmed and this kind of head of mine that's all creative and, and gets inspired by natural beauty. I mean, it was just like overload. <laughs> this is wonderful. <sighs> yes, yeah, so I spent the next six weeks anyway on crutches. <laughs> As you say, you said something very interesting there. You said, you know, you had six weeks off work, which wasn't planned. But I'm thinking as well, it, maybe it wasn't planned, but it's probably maybe what you needed because it, it could be difficult to underestimate the amount of stress that, you, that you're that you under just through the day-to-day -day living. And you, and you said you, you started to ask yourself these questions, you know, what's missing what what are the what are the other fears what are the things that i've stopped doing whether you know it's riding your riding your bike you haven't ridden a bike for six years or going ski going skiing and you've gone gone out there and doing this did you get the thinking time that you needed on that six weeks off or was uh, how, how was that time period Oh, I did. Actually, it was, it was completely different to the six week period I had six years ago where I had much a, a similar injury when I came off my bike. I, I tore my medial and cruciate ligaments and partially dislocated my kneecap. And and so I did something similar on the bike. And, and that time I remember I was crying on the phone to a, one of the deputy heads saying, please let me come back to work. I can't bear it any longer. Whereas this time, yes, it was reflection. It was thinking time. It was um, people were wonderful. I mean, I had so many visitors. So I did have a lot of visits, um, which I you know, couldn't have been without. They, they And people took me out. They knew that I love walking and love being outside. So people were taking me out either so I could go on a little walk on my crutches or in a wheelchair, which was which was great. Um, but yes, it, it did actually um, help me to establish that some things I'd been thinking about earlier in the year um, were the right things for me to do. And so after, I, after I'd lost dad, uh, it got me into this whole thing of considering 
what is my biggest stress? I know I've got some things missing in my life. Uh, one of them is my creativity as well. And, you know, I get so little time to pick up a pencil or pick up a paintbrush and, and be creative. Um, and I, I'd been missing that. I love to write and I had been missing that. Um, and actually, I started to realize that the biggest stress in my life wasn't um, – trying to um, fit everything in. It wasn't trying to uh, help mum and support mum. Actually, the biggest stress in my life was work. Um, and that scared me. That, that that scared me that I'd started to think, okay, this might be the time that I need to step away from teaching. Um, it terrified me. But... Mike and I spoke about it and he, he was fully supportive. He said, I will stand by you, whatever you decide to do. Um, you will still need to work, which is fair. That's fine. But, you know, whatever it is you decide to do, I will stand by you. And so after February half term, I handed in my notice um, in a very emotional way. I, 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 I told my head of department and I cried and I turned up in the head teacher's office and I cried again. It's like, oh, my goodness me, what am I doing? And because I, I am so passionate about teaching and I, I love where I work and um, – you know, the students, they, they, they all have had a place in my heart because we've worked together and we've worked together to see them grow and, you know, see them through this journey of learning. And and after 13 years, I was leaving. And, and oh, my goodness me, that was such a big thing. So, yes, this April time um, off was not planned. It wasn't the way I wanted my last term at the school to be. Um, but it did give me some time to reflect and to think about how I was going to manage my time and what I was going to do to earn money. And also, um, what on earth I was going to do with all the things in my house if we were going to to move on from here as well so I did actually start this was another one of my challenges I started minimizing in my house and I, I am a collector of things I, I like things that are pretty I like things that mean something to me I I, I do very much hold uh, sentiment in objects um, and I guess there's a lot of people out there like that. And I started listening to the minimalists mm -hmm. and I was horrified <laughs> when, when one of them said, you might only think you're a collector of things, but if you look up the term collector in the dictionary, it says hoarder. And I was like, no. <laughs> so yes, I, I started tidying um, and Mike would bring me boxes of things so I could sit with my leg up um, and sort through old photographs and sort through uh, clothes and sort through old belongings and old school things and um, yes what a cathartic time that was um, and <laughs> my drawers upstairs have never looked so insanely tidy I mean Yes, Marie Kondo, eat your heart out. It's that they're just, um, it's, I don't think I have OCD, but yeah, they're certainly very tidy now. And, and I have begun this process, this journey of clearing. Um, yes, it's, it's been a, a very um, interesting time and a, a very fulfilling time. And a very powerful time as well. Mm, very it much so, very you know, releasing, figuring it out, actually, the, the most stressful thing for you, you know, unfortunately, was, you know, it was the job that you loved, you you know, you've taught for over 13 years, but realizing that you needed to let it go, and actually, it was time for you to, to move on, and um, I think identifying that, and then taking the next step, which is, it's scary, not knowing what you're going to do next, but knowing you're, you know, you've got, you've got to work, you've got to earn some, you've got to earn income coming in, but also the minimalism thing, like I did the, exactly the same thing. Like when I, 
I'd move like four after I left work I ended up moving like three or four times in London to get cheaper and cheaper accommodation (laughs) and so finally like I was in my sister's place with all these boxes and books and DVD like just so much crap that I just lugged with me and I ended up having to get a van um because I was I was basically going to head off to South America and I had um I basically needed to get a van uh, fill the van up and well somebody else filled it up and you know drove it back home because I was going to be moved back in with my my parents and then went off traveling but when I came home one of the things that I did was just go through everything and just let it go like just let it all go sell it on eBay and I I find clutter very stressful <laughs> to me I- I, I appreciate yeah. that. I'm really starting to appreciate that now, and I'm I'm finding the the headspace that I get in in um, a clearer room is far better, and and actually the creativity that follows from that is amazing in a clearer room than it is in a cluttered room. Um, I'm saying this. <laughs> If I could just paint you a picture, I'm sat in my lounge at the moment and I'm surrounded by boxes, um, flowers, which are absolutely wonderful because I, I got those from work. I left work last week. Um, so that's finally happened. Uh, and a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because we're having a new bathroom put in. <laughs> so so that there is a toilet in our front room. So I am surrounded by clutter again, but it's 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 a process that um, is very fluid and very movable. And um, and I'm actually really in, I'm enjoying the journey. Um, and there there is a reason that this um, clutter is is happening in the way it is. That we're, we're actually we're planning on um, doing some things that will help us money wise um, and time wise as well. Because mum mum lives in North Somerset, I live in Dorset. And part of my issue has been it's a two and a quarter hour journey each way every time I go and visit. And I visit every week and I stay overnight. And even now I'm not working, it's still tiring, it's still draining. I love the journey now more so than I did because I'm, I have now really um, embraced podcasts obviously tough girl podcast <laughs> included in there um but that's that's been you know my time to actually sit and listen and reflect um but it's still it is still tiring and sometimes I was sometimes I was not reaching mums till 11 or 12 o'clock at night because if I'd had like a parents evening at school for example or I'd had to stay on and do something or I had to come home and get tea um the, the, all, all manner of reasons why I might get to mum's late so then I wake up the next morning at mum's and I'm still tired and, and it's you know so I, I'm not in the right frame of mind and the right place mentally to be helping her or helping myself so Mike Mike has um, a narrow boat um, on the canal up uh, near Abergavenny which he's had for about 12 years and he works a lot in Wales um And stays when he's working up there, he will stay on the boat. That's kind of like, you know, it it just helps us. He doesn't have to go and, you know, pay for digs somewhere. And he just came up with this idea one day and he said, you know what? It's only um, one hour exactly from Abergavenny to your mum's. Why don't we go and stay on the boat? Um, You know, until she doesn't need us to be doing that. Um, And I said, yeah okay <laughs> because because now I'm, I'm you know I knew I, I was handing in my notice it's like I, I had that freedom to be able to say yes okay let's do it so I am yeah we're both in the process of packing up a, a three-bedroom house um, so that we can take belongings that will fit into a 40 foot by six foot one wide space um, and that's not easy by any means but it's going to be cheaper Um, it's going to take the pressure off of me. It's going to mean lots of opportunity for creativity. I still will be working. I am signed up to a supply agency for teaching. So I'm going to get sort of two or three days a week potentially in, but I can do it when I want to do it and not, you know, I I can be in charge of those terms. Yeah. So it's, it's going to allow lots more opportunity and we're going to rent the house out. So the house, um, the house will look after itself and we then look after ourselves because not only 
will mum get to see me in a better state of mind and when she needs me to be there but Mike and I get to spend time together as well because when he's working away up in Wales and I'm working down here in Poole that's not quality time together. Do you feel as though it's all starting to come together now? Yes yes there's it's like a jigsaw Sarah is it's I'm finding it's like an old jigsaw, a vintage jigsaw that, <laughs> you know, maybe one end of the box has opened up and a couple of pieces are, are missing still. And, and bit by bit, I'm finding those pieces and they're all starting to slot into place. And even now, this this is still very much a, a blank canvas. I haven't made decisions about what's going on the canvas that's then going to turn into the jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> But, that, but um, you know that's okay though don't you yes like, I do yeah. and, and that's that's what I'm loving and that's what's so new to me because as a teacher and for any of the other teachers that are out there and anybody else in other similar sorts of jobs where planning is so essential to the role you know I I, I, I plan everything I have spreadsheets for everything and you know all of the major challenges that I've done the big walks that I've done um, I had spreadsheets for those as well and and you know I've, I was quite anxious from about January through to probably a couple of weeks ago even because I kept saying to Mike but what am I going to do about this and how am I going to do that and he said it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter does it I said but I need to know he said why do you need to know I said um because I'm a teacher <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it is it's that that it's just so entrenched in me that I have to plan you know as a teacher you know what you're doing um you know 12 months ahead of time because you have to and so I, I'm pulling away from that bit by bit it's baby steps but I, I'm I'm getting e- easing myself into that um and it's it's testing my resilience it it's testing my ability to make that leap of faith into the unknown but I'm 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 feeling actually very empowered by it and and I'm finding that because I haven't got anything planned as such um I think it's leaving me more open to opportunity than than it would have done had I had all of these concrete plans in place um hundred percent but I I agree with what you're saying It, it can be really scary I am I'm not a teacher, but I definitely, I like planning. And I've been the recipient of one of your spreadsheets. You very kindly emailed me your spreadsheet oh, of, yes, I did. I of all your gear, that. which was the most detailed thing I've ever seen. But it was, you know, it was amazing. But it is, it, I think it can be really scary just like letting letting go of um, letting go of planning, letting go of stuff, letting go of what you should be doing and actually just letting it go and just figuring it out and actually almost allowing yourself to you know you don't have to have the days the weeks the months and the whole life uh planned and booked ahead I mean I I I massively struggle with this and I I ebb and flow between having known what I'm doing for the next six months and being super organized to being in that really uncomfortable situation where you're just like I don't know what I'm doing and I've just got to trust and it's all going to be all okay and exactly like you said like let the opportunities let the opportunities come mm. come up so you, ha- you have made some changes as well so you had what walk and that is evolving do you just want to share a little bit more about how it's evolving and and, and where you're up to with that Yes, yes. So um, Wath Walk began in 2010 as a means to raise money um, and and raise awareness of walking and, and, and what what we can do to, to kind of help ourselves, I guess, and get outside and to the big outdoors. But I have started realising earlier this year that actually I wanted it to be more than that now. I think I think Wath Walk has run its course because it was very much school based as well. And, and obviously now I've left the school. I think that's a chapter that, that can be closed and i've i've really taken a keen interest in this whole thing about facing your fears kind of claiming owning your fear acknowledging it understanding what it is that that you're afraid of or avoiding and then going ahead and and sort of stepping into the unknown as i'm doing helping to you know encourage other people to build their self-confidence their self-belief and their resilience by facing things 
that give them a wobble <laughs> from time to time. Um, you know, because actually understanding that 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 sort of stress, that sort of fear is actually healthy. And I, I speak from it, personal experience, obviously, because I, I've been going through it myself, but also, for, you know, from mum's point of view, too. You know, she's nearly 86 and, and you know, she, she talks to me about things that she's fearful of. And those things that she's fearful of, in some people's eyes, would be much smaller things. The same as students at school, things that they might have been fearful of would be much smaller things than, say, me wanting to go and throw myself out of an aeroplane, for example, which would be huge. So for a student, it might be that they are fearful of putting their hand up in class because they're frightened of what people might think of them if they get a question wrong. For mum, it might be that she's fearful of stepping outside the door that particular day because she's she's frightened of how that's going to make her feel she she doesn't know how that's going to make her feel going outside you know and there's all these little kind of almost baby steps or uh, it's like a micro bravery that people need to adopt in order to then be able to face the bigger challenges so in order to be able to get to those bigger things and build that resilience to face those bigger things, we need to be able to tackle the smaller things that we take for granted. So out of that, I started thinking, I, I really want to build up a website again. I used to have a website for Wathwalk, and I think I mentioned in my first podcast that um, I let that slip. And I was I was really upset about that because all of my blogs and my diaries, they, they I lost those. So um, I thought, OK, th this is something I want to, to do again. And I decided I wanted to call it Head Out. I loved the idea of heading out, head, heading out into the great outdoors and, and getting your daily dose of outside medicine. And so I had it all planned. And then I popped Head Out into the search engine thinking, yes, this is what I'm going to do. And some bugger had already got it. <laughs> And so all my plans were scuppered. But actually, you know, these happy accidents, I, I love them. You know, when, when something doesn't go the way you want it to go, and then you find actually that's for a reason and it, it turns out much better in the end. So I sat down and I thought about it a lot and I discussed it with Mike and I thought about it some more and I came up with the name Head Right Out. And it just fitted so well because actually it's not for me this whole thing about going walking isn't just about heading out uh, this whole thing about me finishing work isn't just about heading out there you know taking that leap of faith heading out into the unknown it's also about getting my head right it's also it's about our well-being our mental health our our, our mental good health I actually prefer almost, to, to, you know, men, mental good health is um, what we should all be aspiring to. And so head right out is that that twofold thing about heading, heading out into the outdoors or heading out into the unknown, facing your fears, facing those challenges, those daily challenges, but also getting your head right and keeping yourself um, on an even keel and keeping yourself healthy. You know, it makes so much sense because it's such a great combination because actually heading out, getting outside, it is good for you. It is good for you. There is something about nature. There has actually been oh. studies done, academic studies about nature and how good it is for you. But then the mental side of things, I think it's becoming even more apparent, you know, as the months go on, as the years go on, it's definitely something I've noticed in the podcast that we talk about more. We talk, mm. of, you know, people's mental health and it's becoming, well, I, you know, I'd like to think it's becoming less stigmatized and actually people can, can talk about it and um, actually get the help and support that they, that they need to, that they need. And to be honest, like majority of people do need support at times in everybody's life. There's going to be yes. times, there's going to be situations where you need extra support and help. And it's definitely, you know, nothing to be ashamed about. So head right out. Love it. <laughs> do I want to ask the question? I don't want to put pressure on you. Okay, that's fine. Just go for it. <laughs> what do you, uh, la, la, la. <laughs> do you, you know, have you got a launch date in mind? Is it going to be a soft launch? Is it just something that you're going to, is it something that you're going to, you said obviously you've mentioned about your creativity and loving to write. Is that where you're going to be writing about topics? Yes. And, yeah. 
Yeah. So it's a, but actually, I did have a launch day, and that was that was going to be yesterday, and um, <laughs> I've learned a massive lesson. I'd planned my summer. Uh, going back to this planning thing again and I the first week after I left work was going to be dedicated to website and so Mike went away for the week because he had jobs to do elsewhere and and I got stuck in focused on my website and I realized that there was absolutely no way I was going to get this done in a week so yes I, I've, I've made good inroads and made a, a, a good start on it but I, I think it will be ready for the end of August now I don't have a, a specific date um, but I, I will aim for the end of August because obviously by September you know we're heading off we're actually going on a, a holiday a walk <laughs> we don't do holidays we do walks and so I, I really would like it to be be done before then and we go off on the 1st of September so there you, you go. I've just, there you go. I've just announced that it's, I love it's it. going to be before the 1st of September. <laughs> and this episode will be coming out at the end of August, so no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. But yes, writing. So I will be writing on there. And, and I've, I've actually been writing a lot um, over the last few months. Um, not as much as I would like to be, but I a lot more than I have been for a long time. Uh, and your journaling challenge, actually, back in April, that was the week after I... Uh, didn't have my knee accident um so that that was good for me I got got back into it then as well but I do I do ultimately want to write books there are some where I've got at least four (laughs) up there in my um memory bank somewhere they're all filed away and I've got notes written down um all over the place so yes there's, there's going to be some books and I want to do some freelance illustration work as well because you know my degree is fine art um I didn't teach fine art but that's that's my specialism and it's like heck I'm not using it and that's what I love I love to be creative so um, I haven't used it to its full potential and I just want to find out what that potential might be so it's it's I think it's going to be you know many balls are juggling as opposed to just one big one um, which is what it's been for the last 13 years so this now it's going to be um variety which I hope will be good too so quickly tell us where tell us where you're going on holiday in September and then I've got one final question for you okay so holiday in September is the coast to coast because we didn't finish it on our north triple crown oh funny what 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 a full circle we've been on so I love it (laughs) We, we started with the Triple Crown and we're going to finish the Up North Triple Crown and we're going to finish with the Up North Triple Crown. I, I have been working uber hard as well on my knee because it's, I've you know really only been back um, kind of site. Well, I've been on my exercise bike um, for the last few weeks, but yeah, really trying to get the, the ligaments and everything um, strong enough to be able to, to do the coast to coast. So, yes, that is that is the, the goal. Uh, September the 1st. I love that though because actually having that goal it means you know it focuses your rehab it focuses your your head in terms of you know what do I need to get done what do I need to do what do I need to achieve um yes. so absolutely sounds absolutely fantastic thank you so much for sh- for sharing everything that you shared about you know what's been going on over the past couple of years it's really really interesting and I you know I'm really excited about the direction that you're heading in but I, thank I, you so much. but I love the fact that it's it's not all planned out. It's almost like, let's see where this, let's see where this goes. And I love the mm-hmm. fact as well that you've also shared that there's four books in you because I can't <laughs> wait when we have another podcast in- interview and it's like how, you know, everyone's going to be asking you now, like how are the books coming along? Are you writing every day? Oh, no. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. But so before we say goodbye, I'd love to get you just to final words of advice, wisdom that you've learned over the past sort of 18 months going through everything that that you've been through, you know, for other women and men who may be in a similar situation and just wondering, you know, is there light at the end of the tunnel? How are we going to get through this? What advice would you have? Wow, yes. I would say, yes, always give time for yourself. Always, if there's something that makes you happy, you might have to adjust it. Uh, You might have to to tweak it slightly in order for you to be able to keep doing that with whatever your thing is that's going on but don't stop doing it just just keep doing it because th- that's your soul food and and without you having that you're not going to be any good to anybody else so you've got to look after yourself and the second thing is 
you must challenge yourself. You know, do my I think my mantra has become over the last few years, not just this year, but over the last few years, do something that scares you every day. Mike used to say it to me on the Southwest Coast Path because that's where I met Mike originally. It was on the Southwest Coast Path. And I thought, what are you talking about? <laughs> but actually, it's it's been embedded into my everyday language. Um, and even today, coming down this massive hill, I had no walking poles. And these steps on the side of the cliff were so steep. And I haven't done a walk like that since my accident. Um, so my knee was feeling a bit wobbly as well. And I was just going, come on, come on, Zoe, come on, Zoe, you can do this. Do something that scares you every day. And that, for me, is what gets you through the other stuff, the other hard stuff that life throws at you. So don't be frightened of trying it. Zoe, thank you so much for coming back on the Tough Girl Podcast Extra to share your story. Thank you for inviting me, Sarah. It's been wonderful. A massive thank you to Zoe for coming back on the Tough Girl Podcast Extra to share more about what's been going on in her life since we last spoke. Everything that we've talked about is available on the Tough Girl Challenge show notes. So if you just go to toughgirlchallenges.com and go and look at for the blog post, then all of the information will be on there, including links to all to all of Zoe's social media accounts as well. So you can go and follow her along, go and support her on this incredible journey. And why not get involved with 100 Mappy Days? Like what an incredible thing to do. Or why not create your own personal challenge for you that it excites you and that gives you purpose, gives you helps you give you structure and something to aim towards. I think it's a fabulous idea. So have a little think, what new adventure or challenge could you take on? Something that you've been wanting to do for a while. Now is the time. I'm giving you permission. Decide what it is you want to do and get after it. Final thing is just to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been listening. A massive thank you to everyone who's been supporting the Tough Girl Podcast and Tough Girl Podcast Extra. I couldn't do it without the financial support of patrons. So please do go check out Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Tough Girl Podcast. We have episodes coming out on a Tuesday at 7 a.m. UK time. Just an example, the past couple of episodes that we've had coming out in August, we spoke with Dr. Joyce Azam, who is the first Lebanese woman to climb the Seven Summits. She's also going after the Explorers Grand Slam. We spoke with Monica Sattler, who's a management consultant turned world record holder. She's the first woman to cycle the Villette at Espanol, 3,058 kilometers with 49,337 meters of climbing. We also caught up with Wendy Searle, who's attempting to break the women's speed record for, for a solo expedition to the South Pole, and she's attempting that in November 2019. So please do go check out toughgirlchallenges.com. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the episodes um, that are coming out on a Tuesday at 7 a.m. UK time and the bonus episodes the ad hoc episodes that come out on Thursday at 7 a.m. UK time. Massive thank you to all the patrons. Please do go check out patreon.com forward slash tough girl podcast where you can find out more information about supporting the tough girl podcast. You can support from $2 a month, $5 a month. I just want to take a moment to thank the patrons in August who've been absolutely phenomenal. I just want to say a massive thank you to Kate Cassie for increasing her pledge from $2 to $5. Thank you to Andrea Farwell. Thank you, Barbara Cavana. Um, Jeff Martin, Goalie, Kala Horan. It's just absolutely inspiring. I could not do this without you. And to have new pledges signing on, supporting the podcast, especially after the fourth year anniversary, is absolutely amazing. Um, I really, really do appreciate it so much. So just wherever you are, thank you so much. I <laughs> I never really know what to say apart from thank you. Just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You know, just $2 a month or $5 a month makes a massive difference. If you do sign up for, for the $5 level and you're a female, you can come and join the Tough Girl Tribe, which is the closed Facebook community that I run that I'm very, very active in. We have things like book clubs. We have Success Sunday. We share resources. It's an educational place. It's a supportive group to be involved in. So please do think about signing up as a patron. Anyway, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, have an awesome day. Take care. Lots of love. And I'll be back with you next Tuesday for another awesome episode of the Tough Girl Podcast. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Bye.